the middle, the lady on our panel, Marita Lorenz. She was Fidel Castro's mistress. More than that, Marita claims that she traveled with the team of assassins that would ultimately murder President Kennedy 29 years ago. This is Marita's first national television interview in a decade. Where have you been? Hiding. Are you frightened? Uh, no, not really. No, not really hiding, surviving. You met Castro on 1959? Yes, February 27th, 1959 in Havana. In Havana. On my father's luxury liner, BMS Berlin. It's a cruise. And he came aboard. And I was uh, 18. Was it love at first sight? I would think so, yes. Infatuation, yes. Did you begin an affair almost immediately? Yes, I went back to New York. He sent a plane for me and I returned, thinking it would be only about two weeks. Turned out to be eight and a half months. And, uh, and you became pregnant with his baby? Yes, I did. I was drugged and uh, returned to the United States and then recruited by the CIA. So the recruitment by the CIA happened in what year? Uh, 59, the end of 59. So everything happened in that one tumultuous right. year? Yes. And the CIA asked you, Marita, to do what? Well, they said, um, we, said we don't like his uniform, we don't like his beard, we think he's turning communist. You have a, his uniform, which was only honorary, you have the key to his bedroom, would you do this country a great deed? And after much talk, uh, kill him. Why would you want to kill the man who fathered your son? Well, they used a lot of disinformation and brainwashing uh, on me and, uh, you know, documents to say that uh, Castro killed the baby, and which was all untrue. And uh, since I had the key to his bedroom, uh, just to go back, that he was a threat to national security. Let's see that picture again, Jim Bob, the picture of uh, Marita and Fidel back when... That uh, was on board... Better the... Times? That was on board your father's boat? Yes, that's the first day I met him. It seems for an 18-year-old you're uh, quite enamored and uh, right. quite aggressive there. Yes. Oh, is he giving you an autograph? No, yes, right. He was or giving the phone me number order. to his personal suite? Right. That too? Your son, is he alive? Yes, he is. Living where? In Havana. In you Utah. had a daughter as well, didn't you? Uh, yes, my daughter is by the, my second assignment, another dictator. She is alive, well, and married happily today. May I ask which dictator? The second one was General Marco Perez Jimenez, former president of Venezuela. He was an assignment to get funds for the so-called Bay of Pigs invasion. He had and, quite uh, a string of incredible lovers there, didn't he? personal. He said they were going to kill me because I messed up the assignment, killing Fidel. Uh, so he helped me, but it was also a scandal. I want to get to the assassination of Marilyn Monroe. Before I do, though, I want to know, did you try and kill your lover, Fidel Castro? Uh, well, let's just say I went back through the motions. Uh, they put so much, so such a heavy burden on me. I was only a kid, really. And, uh, How were you I, going to do it? I poisoned him with botulinum toxin capsules. I did go back and one dry run just to see if I could go in and out, which I did. And I came back and uh, they said to put it in his food, pills. But Fidel uh, has no set time or... He doesn't get up from 9 to 5 and eat at uh, 12, or he eats when he feels like it. His schedule is very busy. But uh, the second time he asked me, did you come to kill me? I said, yes. You and admitted he was, it? Uh, uh, yes. What did he do? He just lay there on the bed smoking a cigar and said, well... And he reached over and he had his 45 over a lamp and he handed it to me. He said, go ahead. So I took the gun and he um, said, it's too rusty. He said, you can't kill me, nobody can. And he said, be careful when you go back, they will kill you. So I just, 
And I don't think they've forgiven me today for messing up that assignment. I didn't do it, and I returned, and I've gotten hell ever since. Does the name Frank Sturgis ring a bell to Very anybody? well. He was... Remember him? The Watergate... Fiorini. The Watergate guy? A.K.A. Fiorini. He was my, uh... What do they call him? Military advisor. Was he the one that was telling you how to kill Fidel? Yes. Among other people also. So Frank Sturgis was, you think, part of the CIA? Absolutely. If he wasn't a signed agent, he was a contract employee. And, and Frank certainly on the payroll. Sturgis, you claim, took you to Dallas. Well, it was after the... Uh, extradition of Perez Jimenez in August 1663 there was severe aggravated harassment against me um, I went back to Sturgis for help and after speaking to him he said well let's just go do a gun run I mean we were running guns uh, I thought this was just another gun run from Texas. Miami, from to, Miami to, Dallas. to Dallas, right. But what bothered me was that they were bringing guns and high-velocity automatics and disguises. To Dallas. To Dallas. And the so date? The two, two or three days before. The assassination. Right. Did he say, we're going to Dallas to kill President Kennedy? He didn't say that. He said it was a top assignment. But in those days, due to the Bay of Pigs... Uh, Lack of air cover, the, everybody in Miami, especially the anti-Castroites, were extremely vehemently anti-Kennedy, anti the government for being let down without air cover. And they had their reasons to feel terribly rejected. He didn't say that. It was just a top assignment. A big job a big tomorrow. A job, a top job. And, uh, you know, I went along thinking I would be used again as a decoy and to pick up weapons, and we go back. All right. But... Uh, I was, uh, I I was in the way. You were in the way. Right, you'll tell us what happened in Dallas.